Good evening, good evening all, and welcome to the broadcast of A Dash of Salt. I'm your host, Elder Patrice Green, and we are excited. Thank you so very much for spending time with us on Tuesday. If you had a day like me, you know that what's going to happen on this line is well anticipated. We thank God for what we're going to experience from the woman of God. Before we bring her on the line, as always, let me get housekeeping out the way. First and foremost, we give the Lord honor. We thank him for everything that he's done and going to do. We just thank him for his grace and mercy. We give honor to the CEO of the broadcast of SIBM, Bishop Allen, and we continue to ask you to pray to cover him and the broadcast. We give honor to you, you, and you. If you are new to the broadcast, please go on to the Facebook page, listen to it, tag, share, take notes, invite people, because I'm sure you're going to enjoy it. Tonight, we are honored and privileged to have a wonderful woman of God that I met a couple of weeks ago. I met her through a dear friend that I love dearly. I went out to California, and I flew by myself, y'all. I went all the way to California (laughs) to a woman's conference that really changed me, not only spiritually, but it changed me in so many dynamics that I just wanted to share Some of the people that I met, the pastor that's here now, is an awesome, anointed woman of God. She walks in the authority of the anointing of the Holy Holy Ghost, but she also walks under the anointing of true, passionate love. So many times we forget that that's the most important thing in our ministry, which is love. So today, we are honored to have this woman on the line. I told her I was just going to get out the way because I told her Uh I was going to let her (laughs) her speak a word. We have Pastor Pastor Keisha Lewis from California. Again, we welcome you. We bless you. We just thank God. First, let me also say we just thank God for all the people who made this possible. I thank God for Keisha uh, Edwards Chubbs and her husband for making sure that everything was in order. I thank God for the people on Facebook who were yeah. inboxing me to make sure they were able to keep in touch to hear what you have to say. They kept me on my toes today, Pastor. Okay. Wow. So how awesome is that? that? How it's awesome. awesome. Is that? It's awesome. So they are ready. I'm ready. I'm going to cross my feet and my fingers and just be like, okay, Pastor, what does the Lord have to say? Amen. Well, I'm, I just want to first thank you, uh, Elder Patrice, for inviting me. I, I don't take it lightly. Uh, any opportunity you're given to share the word and talk about our Savior is just a blessing. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I just want you to know that I don't take it lightly. I'm honored and I'm humbled uh, to be on the line Bless this you. evening. Amen. Bless and you. for Bishop giving me the opportunity and for the vision that God has given him to broadcast yes. has a dash of salt. And yes. uh, it is amazing, you know, when the Lord gives you a vision and he tells you to do something, you don't know what's going to be birthed out of it. You just say yes. yes. And uh, yes. because of his yes, we're on this phone today and many lives will be impacted and touched and I believe throughout the generations to come. So, yeah, thank you so much for inviting me. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, I have reasons, like I said, when I came out to California, when I came out to Minister Chubb's conference, which was immaculate, um, I saw, you know, certain things you see in people immediately, you know, uh, the the family atmosphere, uh, the loving atmosphere, you know, I appreciate it because I was treated well and I appreciate it. And I thank God that from that birth, a new... um, Covenant connection. That's okay? it. Um, a lot of times I think people fail to realize that you cannot build up the kingdom of God by yourself. Absolutely. And I think right now we're getting so comfortable. People are getting so easily, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? They're getting so easily distracted by issues when they fail to realize the devil likes it when we don't communicate in the body of Christ. The right. devil loves it when you're at odds with somebody over something that's trivial, that right. really has nothing to do with the kingdom. 
So right. tonight, that's why I wanted to have you because I saw the love that you expressed to everyone that you flowed, yes. especially with your spiritual daughter. It was wonderful to see the connection and how yes. you involved everybody. Um, yes. I do know that you are a mother, and that yes. uh, first, let me say congratulations to your daughter because I Thank understand you. being a mother myself. My daughter went to school on a four-year scholarship, so yeah. that was like $120,000 I didn't have to worry about. But the fact that, you know, when they do it, we don't really remind everybody it was God. It was That's complete right. God. So we thank God and we bless her, and we just want to say congratulations to baby thank girl. Thank you. Um, I met your wonderful daughter. The yeah. I, I think it was the baby girl I met. Maybe it was yeah, the baby Jordan. girl. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. Yeah, Jordan. And, and I'm... Yeah, and I met your anointed husband, Pastor <laughs> Russell, who just yeah. treated everybody like we were part of his family. So yeah. I just like you to elaborate because you know everybody that sees you sees the beautiful smile, the loving spirit. But I just want them to know that you know the purpose that you have is completely kingdom. And a lot of yeah. times people get they get confused. They forget right. that we are here to be ambassadors of Christ. Amen. And being a, you know, being an ambassador of Christ, that comes with some uh, protocol, you know? Absolutely. So Absolutely. Tonight, tonight, if you would just, you know, speak on certain things, we just want to give them everything I got when I was in California when I was with you, too. Amen. You know, I tell you, God is, is up to some incredible things, and he is such a master to teach us and how he will connect you you know, for more reasons than one, you know, and, mm -hmm. and had we not connected with Keisha, um, I would have never met you. And had I not met you, we would not be on this phone right now. And the lives that are that will be touched and um, impacted by what God shall speak through this through this uh, broadcast, you know, might not have taken place. So I just love the way God does things, and I just think that we need to understand, uh, Elder Patrice, that when. When we, when when he, when God brought our mothers and fathers together, He had us in mind. And when we got to understand that God has a purpose and He has a plan for everything that He does, and that I, and we have, we have spiritual gifts, we have natural yeah. gifts, you know, that God's given us. But I think that you get your most fulfillment when you know what God, what was in His mind when He created you. Mm -hmm. And I tell you something, when you don't know your purpose, when you don't Come know on. what you've been put on the earth to do, that is when you operate in, in jealousies and envies and insecurities that the enemy would love for you to rest in that space. But the Bible says, for I know the plan that I have for you, saith the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. And I just think that we need to find out what was in the mind of God when he created me, that I am not just created to go to work every day, come home, go to the motion, and keep repeating the cycles. I have a purpose. I have a call. I need to find out what that is and work it. And that's where you will find your fulfillment. That's when you're going to find your peace and your sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. And so when we don't know that, then that's yeah. when we're confused and we get caught up in things that we should not be caught up in. We need to know what's in the mind of God concerning our lives and walk that thing out. It doesn't matter where you came from. It doesn't matter where you've been. It doesn't even matter what you've done. God knows how to take your mess and turn it into a message. I'm telling you, I believe yes. that if we grab a hold of our God-given purpose, I'm telling mm -hmm. you something, the kingdom will be advanced. Yes, yes. That kingdom will be in that because we spend too much time doing things that God has not purposed us to do, and that's the reason mm -hmm. why the kingdom is not being advanced. Mm -hmm. And the, mm -hmm. one of the reasons why we don't know is because a lot of us are not spending time alone with God. We're spending more mm -hmm. time on the phone. We're being caught up in stuff that we really shouldn't be caught up in. We need to get yeah. in the presence of God. We need to get our minds renewed, and we need to say, God, what was in your mind when you created me? Grab a hold of that and walk it out. Yes. And walk yes. it out. You know, and uh, I'm telling you, your perfect, your, your your prosperity is connected to your purpose. Everything, yes. oh, my God. When you find your passion, 
Bear mm-hmm. in mind your prosperity because it, God has given each and every person a gift, Elder Patrice. And our mm-hmm. gifts are not for ourselves. Our gifts are for somebody else. You have mm-hmm. been called to, 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 although God has given you a gift, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's in you, but it's not necessarily for you. Wow. Mm-hmm. I hope you got that. Your gift, yeah. the gift that God has given you, is so that you can be a blessing to somebody else. Somebody needs yeah. what you got. You are an answer to somebody else's problem. I'm an answer to somebody else's problem. So yeah. when we find out what our purpose is and we begin to walk it out, then we can help somebody else. Mm, 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 mm. You know, and so I, I just believe that we're living, we're living in a time where God is calling us back to the altar, get back to the basics. Get back to seeking my faith, because there you will find out who you are. And when you don't have a revelation of who Jesus is, you will never Mm -hmm. have a revelation of who you are. You first have to get a revelation of who Jesus is. Not a revelation of the way church operates, because that doesn't define who you are. But what defines who you are is when you get a revelation of who Jesus is. Because the Bible says that when Jesus was with the disciples, he had performed all kind of miracles. He did a lot of things. And he looked mm-hmm. at the disciples and he said, who do men say that I, who do men say that the Son of Man is? And then they mm-hmm. went on and they told him what they thought, people, what they were hearing. And then Peter stood up and Peter said, you are the Christ. You are the son of the living God. And then Jesus mm-hmm. turned around and looked at Peter, and he said, flesh and blood did not reveal this to you. He told him before mm-hmm. that, he said, you are Peter. So so when, when Peter got a revelation of who Jesus was, Jesus yeah. was able to tell Peter who he was. So you never get a revelation of who you are until you get a revelation of who Jesus is. Because Jesus even went on to say, he looked at him and he said, and you are Peter, upon this rock, in other words, upon this revelation of who I am, I'm going to build my church. So, which means that the church is built upon the revelation of who Jesus is. I'm going to build my church upon this revelation. And then he says that, that I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom because you got a revelation of who I am, Peter. I'm going to give you keys. I'm going to give you authority. I'm going to give you access. Whatever you bind on earth, Peter, shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So what is he mm. saying? When you get a revelation of who I am, I'm going to tell you who you are. And when you realize who you are, then you can walk in power. You can walk in authority, but it starts with who I am. You've got to know who Jesus is. You've got to have a revelation of who he is, not just mm-hmm. about him. You've got to know him for yourself. You cannot live mm-hmm. off of mama's revelation. You can't live mm-hmm. off of daddy's revelation. You can't just be on Facebook and hearing other folks' revelation and think you got it. You've got to walk through your situation because it's through situations that you get a revelation. You learn, you learn God in his ways through situations. You will never get a revelation of who God is just on a mountaintop. You get to learn who he is when you go through a fire, when you go through rejection, when you go through having to be by yourself. Joseph, Joseph got a revelation of who God was in a pit. Although God spoke to him as a young man, he still had to go through a process. In the pit, he learned his voice. In the prison, he found out what his gift was. And not, not only did he have the gift uh, uh, of dreams, but he also found out that he had the gift of interpretation when they threw him in a prison. So it's through situations that you get revelation. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. It's through situations. And so we're so quick, Elder Patrice, to want to get out of situations, but it's in situations that you get a revelation of who God is. Yeah. My God be done. You don't just know him know him as a healer. You know him as your healer now because he healed somebody. When you go yeah. through and you ain't got no time and you're trying to figure out how you're going to pay all your bills, then God steps in and he provides. Now you know him as your provider. Yes. But it's through situations that you get revelation. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Through situations. Wow. And so mm-hmm. I just believe right now that God is really calling us back to to the altar 
to get back mm-hmm. to the to place of prayer and seeking mm-hmm. his faith. We got church mm-hmm. down. We know how to do church. We know how to yeah. talk to God. But many mm-hmm. of us have not mastered the walk and walking this thing out, living it, living it. And he says, in the word of God says, without holiness, no man shall shall see God. He wasn't talking about seeing him in heaven. You won't see him operate in your life without holiness because he's attracted to holiness. Because he is holy. My God, I feel God right there. Hallelujah. He is holy. And he is requiring holiness from his people. Mm Mm-hmm. And so we don't have enough messages about that. We don't have enough mm-hmm. messages about living right, about walking up right. We don't want to hear mm-hmm. that. All we want to hear is that God's going to do it. God's about to mm-hmm. open up the door. And then you got mm-hmm. a lot of frustrated Christians who are receiving mm-hmm. all these prophecies, and they have mm-hmm. not qualified for the prophecy that was spoken. Mm-hmm. So, the word of God says that God will not withhold any good thing from them that would walk up right before him. You can't prophesy blessings over my life, and I know I ain't living right. When the word comes, you still got to qualify for what what was spoken. Yes. And so I, I'm telling you, and, it, and it, 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 it's back to the altar. That's what the Lord said. We got to get back to seeking his faith, get back to getting into this world, word. And I'm telling you, the whole dynamic of your life is going to be begin to shift. Yes. Begin yes. to shift when we get back to obeying God and following his commandments. The Bible says mm-hmm. over in Jeremiah that when God God had spoke to, to the children of Israel and he told them, he said, because they did not follow his commandments, they went backwards and not forward. Whenever mm-hmm. God tells you to do something, it's always for your advancement. It's always yes. for your Mm-hmm, but for mm-hmm. some reason, if we can't see how it's going to benefit us, then we don't want to do it. It's yeah. got to make sense. Well, I, But the thing about it is is that, you know, Jesus was even obedient even unto, even unto death. Yes, he was. He was. Up, even to the death of the cross, he obeyed God because he knew that God's will was better than his will. Mm-hmm. And whatever it is that God was telling him to do, was going to was going to benefit him or basically benefit us because if there was not a death, there would not have been a resurrection. Mm-hmm. And even Jesus Himself said, "Father, if there's any other way, if there's any other way, let this cup pass from me. But nevertheless, not my will, your will be done." In other words, listen. If there's any other way I can I can I can get to the resurrection. Please let it happen. I don't want what's in this cup. I do not want what's in this cup. I don't know about you, but there have been cups that God is, is, has given to me that I didn't want to drink. But I mm-hmm. knew that I had to go through it in order to get to the other side of what he had for me. So I just say for everybody who's on this on the air and in Elder Retreat, as you're on your listen, whatever it is that God is saying for you to walk mm-hmm. through, know mm-hmm. that he's processing you. Hallelujah mm-hmm. for your expected end. He's processing mm-hmm. you for your expected end. Before you before you can get to what he has already promised, you got to go through some stuff. And yeah. nobody wants to process. Everybody just wants the blessing. True. True. We don't want the process. We just want the blessing. Mm-hmm. But you can't get the blessing without the process. Without it at all. Without There's no way, the, Pastor. <laughs> there's no way. There's no way. You know, you go to you could go to the you go to the grocery store and you see a a, a cake a cake the, the, the finished product of a cake. You look at it. Oh, I want that. You get it home. You open it up. There's still a process in order mm-hmm. for what it is that you saw in that box to manifest. Mm-hmm. You gotta you gotta crack them eggs. Come on. You gotta you gotta put the meat meat milk in it. You gotta put the butter mm-hmm. in it. Come on. You gotta mm-hmm. stir it up real good. <laughs> There's a process. Mm-hmm. You got to put it in the oven. It's a process. And that's what mm-hmm. I believe that many of us, once we try to avoid, but the Lord says you cannot avoid the process. Whatever it is that you are going through, whatever it is that he has put before you, know that it is perfecting you. Know that it's going to work together for your good. And know that he is with you. 
not resisting the process. Because when you mm-hmm. resist the process, you're resisting the problem. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Do not resist the problem. Walk through it. Walk through it. Hallelujah. He will never allow you to go through anything without testing it first. Jesus told mm-hmm. the disciples, he said, he said, I, he said, Jesus told the disciples, he said, let go, let go. He said, mm-hmm. let go, which means that he was with them. He said, let go over to the other side. They get in the boat on their way to the other side, and the Bible says there was a windstorm. My God, how many on here? Listen, God told you to do something. You was all, you were so excited about it. You jumped in and you started moving forward. Then all of a sudden, something broke. Something happened, and then you begin to question whether or not God said it because everything starts falling apart. Listen, as they were going yes. across, they were crossing over to the other side. The Bible says that there was a windstorm, and then the Bible says that the, the, that the water got into the boat, and the disciples got afraid. And then they went to Jesus, and Jesus was in the hinder part of the boat sleeping. Oh, my God. He was in the hinder part of the boat sleeping. Water was getting in the boat. There was a major windstorm. But here it is, Jesus is sleeping. The disciples go to Jesus, wake him up, and says, it says to him, Master, don't you care that we perish? Don't mm-hmm. you see what's going on? Come on, how many of you right here on here today said, God, are you there? Can't you see I got all bills, all these bills and I got a little bit of money? Don't you see I've been by myself all these years? Don't you know I've been tired and I've been given? Don't you know, God, that my car just got repossessed? Don't you know that I'm three months behind on my mortgage? Don't you see, God, that my, I've been praying for my kids? You told me to do this and I'm not seeing a shift? Listen, God, listen. So the Bible says that they went down and Jesus looked at them and he said, he understand the revelation of who God is in your life. In your life. It's in, in your, your life. life. In your mm-hmm. life. You know? Mm-hmm. And so Peter wasn't a, Peter stood up, you know? And he just looked mm-hmm. at him. He said, Jesus Christ, I know who you are. Because mm-hmm. I've been watching you. I've been mm-hmm. studying you. Come on, somebody. I've been spending time with you. I ain't just mm-hmm. been around you. Come on. I, I, I've, been, I, I've been close to you. And yeah. I've seen you do it. I've seen mm-hmm. you. I've seen you perform miracles. I've seen you yes. survive. Come on, somebody. Mm-hmm. And listen, when we begin to doubt God, and that's that flesh. That's the reason why the Bible says that we gotta walk in the Spirit so that we mm-hmm. do not fulfill the lust of our flesh. Come on. We, Come on. Every single day, we gotta renew our minds with the Word of God mm-hmm. every day, mm-hmm. because if not, your flesh will rise up. Your Come flesh on. will rise. We got to live with this thing. 
So mm-hmm. that's why we got to kill it every day. You can't just try to do it on Sunday. Every day you've got to deny yourself. How do you do it? By renewing your mind with the word of God. Mm-hmm. Your mind is your navigation system. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, Every mm-hmm. It'll, it'll tell you, no, 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 don't go that way. No, 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 don't go that way. Before you sin and you fall, you got to think about it first. You don't just mm-hmm. do it. You think about it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But when your mind is right, come on, when your mind is right and it's renewed, hallelujah, you're taking on the mind of Christ like you're thinking like Christ. You're going to be responding yes. like Christ. And even if you do fail and you do mess up, you know that you have an advocate with the Father. And you know that you can repent. He will cast some sins as far as the east is from the west. Come on, Pastor. Oh, I'm, hallelujah. I'm telling Come you. Come on, we gotta Holy Ghost. We got to get back to that place. We got to get back mm-hmm. to that place of seeking God. We got to get back yes. to that place of, of, of knowing that he is with us. And let me say mm-hmm. this, and I'm going to let you take over because this is really ruining in my spirit. And Come that on now. is... Listen, is, is, is that many, 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 many Christians right mm-hmm. now are doing everything that they know to do. Mm-hmm. They're fasting, they're praying, mm-hmm. you mm-hmm. know, they're trying to uh, do their best to love the unlovable folks that are doing them wrong. They're trying to still pray and be right, but it seems like they're still not getting what it is that they have been believing God for. Mm -hmm, And they're getting mm -hmm. frustrated. They go to church on Sunday, but yet in the back of their mind, they're trying to figure out, God, where are you? How come you have not done this for me? I've done everything you asked of me, but Mm -hmm. yet I still have not received what it is that I have been believing you for. Well, there was a woman by the name of Hannah. There was Mm -hmm. a woman by the name of Hannah, and many of you know her story. Hannah's Mm -hmm. name means favor. Her name means grace or favor. And many of you know the Bible talks about in 1 Samuel, chapter number uh, 1, um, I believe again, beginning at chapter, chapter uh, verse 9, you could read it. She and uh, Penina were the wives mm-hmm. of Elkanah. And mm-hmm. Elkanah uh, uh, loved Hannah more than he did uh, Penina. But Penina was able to have children, but Hannah's womb was closed. Now, her womb was closed because the Lord closed it. The Lord closed her womb. Here she is, a favored woman. Listen, she was favored because her name means favored. Her womb was closed, which means she was barren. And not only was she barren, she was also blameless, meaning that she didn't even do anything to deserve her condition. God just closed her womb. And here it is, she was close to somebody by the name of Penina. And Penina's name means a, 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 a pearl. Her name means pearl. Now, here she is. She had everything. She had she had children, but she would torment Hannah. She literally would torment Hannah because of what? Because Hannah's womb was closed, but Penina knew that Elkanah, her husband, loved, her, loved Hannah more than her. So she would torment her. And so finally, Hannah got to the point where she was tired of it. She was so broken that she got to the temple. She just got to the temple, uh, Elder Patrice, and got on her face and cried out to God to the point where she was just moving her lips. She was so broken because she could not understand. She did everything she knew to do. She loved God. She loved her husband, but she could not give her husband what she felt like he wanted from her. And Mm. even to the point where her husband knew that she was broken, he came to her and he said to her, am I not greater or better than 10 sons? And it had nothing to do with her love for her husband. It had to Mm. do with what she knew was in her spirit, in her heart, something that she desired, but she could not obtain. She could not get. So she was just, Mm. she was just messed up about it. So she got to the temple, and she cried out to God to the point where she was just, you know, moving her lips. She couldn't even have any. She didn't even have words. I don't know about you, but that got to the point where I prayed, and I didn't even have words anymore. All I could say was Jesus. I don't even know what to pray. I don't know what to say no more. I did everything I know to do. But then the Bible says that as she was praying, she prayed this prayer. Oh, God. She began to pray in her prayer, because she made a vow to God. She made mm-hmm. a vow to him. And he, she mm-hmm. said to him, 
if you give me a son. Yes. So she was specific with God. Mm-hmm. Specific with God. She said, if you give me a son, I will give him back to you. And he will mm-hmm. serve you all the days of his life. He there will be his, he'll never, his hair, a razor will never touch his head. She was specific with God. But she got to the point where she started praying the will of God. The will mm-hmm. of God. The Bible mm-hmm. says that uh, uh, we have this confidence in him that whatever mm-hmm. we ask, according to his will, he hears us. So he doesn't hear anything that does not line up with his will. So she yeah. had been praying properly pr- prior to that that she wanted a child, but she got to the point where she prayed the will of God, and that was, give me a son. And so God granted her a son. But she didn't just get a son, she got a prophet. My God, what am I telling you? Some of y'all on here that are listening, you've been praying and you've been believing God. But I want Mm -hmm. you to know right now that God is going to give you something bigger and greater than what you asked for. He's not going to give you just, listen, Samuel, Samuel's name means God heard. God heard Hannah's prayer. So she named him Samuel because God heard her prayer. And God gave her a son, and not just a son, but a prophet. And a prophet is somebody that not only doesn't just speak about God, but speaks Mm -hmm. for God. And the Mm -hmm. Lord says today what he is going to do for those of you who've been praying, that's been seeking him, and been living right, that what you're going to give birth to is going to speak for him. You're not going to have to talk about the blessing. The blessing is going to talk for God. Hallelujah. Mm. It's going to talk you, for God. The blessing yes. is going to talk for God. They're going to know that God is with you. They're going to know that God's hand is with you. Oh, my God. It's not going to be anything manufactured. It's no man's going to get the glory. Listen, you, but Hannah had to go through a process. Hannah yes. had to go through a lot. And what Penina didn't realize is that she was being used, hallelujah, by God. Although Hannah didn't know it, but God used Hannah to to, to, I mean, use Penina to process him mm-hmm. for her miracle, for her miracle. That's the reason why we got to be careful about how we address our haters. We got to yes. be careful how we deal with people who God has mm-hmm. placed in our life to process us. That's why he Come said, on. I will prepare a table in the presence of your enemies. Let your enemies stay around. Let your haters stay around. They don't have to mm-hmm. know that you know that they're your haters. All you got mm-hmm. to do is keep doing right. And the blessing of God is going to speak for God. And don't you mm-hmm. the Bible says, to touch out my anointed and do my prophets no harm. If you're doing mm-hmm. what's right, my God, God said in his word, if you live up, if you live right, I'll even make your enemies at peace with you. Hallelujah. Thanks. So listen, tonight, oh, hallelujah, didn't even realize it, that she was being used to process Hannah to her greatest miracle. And everybody on on this line right now, I want you to know, if you've been praying for something, you've been praying Mm -hmm. for your children, if you've been believing Mm -hmm. God for a breakthrough, you've been believing Mm -hmm. God for a a, a spouse, if you've been believing God for a different living arrangement, maybe you're believing Mm -hmm. God for a car. I don't know what you've been believing God for. But if you are walking upright, he said, I will not withhold any good thing. But God says, this blessing that's coming your way, my God, is not just going to shock you, but it's going to shake everybody that counted you out. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Mm. Glory to God. You, but you got to go through the process. What about yes. Hannah? Hannah was processed, but she gave mm-hmm. birth to a prophet. And this is mm-hmm. She didn't just give birth to a prophet, but she was. But Samuel was the one who anointed Saul. And he was mm. the one who anointed David. My God, I'm dying. Y'all better talk to me right here. If you're doing what you're supposed to do, God said, I'm going to give you something that you can only dream of having. Because mm. I'm a God that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, yes. far and above yes. what you can ask mm-hmm. or think. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Everybody on this phone, you need a revelation. And when you get yes. a revelation, you're going to get the mm-hmm. manifestation. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. You don't get the manifestation without the revelation. Hallelujah. The breakthrough starts when you get a revelation, yes. not the manifestation. All right, yes. Elder Patrice. Oh, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost. Woo, girl. <laughs> you walked it all through the place. And the bottom line is, like I keep saying when before when you said it, it's maturity. Yes. 
it's maturity. maturity. You got to be mature to go through the process. You got to be too mature enough to deal with people. You got to be mature enough to know how to talk to people, how to treat people. You oh. have to know your maturity level is what's going to elevate you. If you're Come mature, on. then God will trust you. He can trust you to be before people. So many people get this thing ministry backwards. This is yes. not showtime at the Apollo. This is giving God the complete glory. If he can trust you in your mature state, you'll go from level to level to level. The anointing will grow and grow and grow. And so many times people get upset because they holler, you're a false prophet. Things are going wrong because you're not mature. You're not right. spending time with God. I felt so at peace when I was at California. I had no choice but to spend time with God because I was there for the conference. We didn't do yes. any running around. We didn't do a bunch of shopping. We did eat. Now, I'm not even going to say that. Yes. But even yes. in the eating, we were worshiping, fellowshipping, and giving God the glory. There was yes. nothing there that was about flesh. But in That's my right. midnight hours, I was in the room because I was still on East Coast time in the yes. West Coast. So while y'all yes. were wide awake, I was sleepy. So I yes, would go yes, to yes. my room and this is where the maturity came in. I wouldn't get in and start calling everybody. I just laid there and spoke with God. God, yes. I'm here. Use me yes. for your glory. Yes. Use me for your glory. And the That's revelation right, I got there because see, it was yes. good for me to be there because so many yes. times when we get in ministry, when you've been in ministry over four or five years, sometimes mm-hmm. you think you could do everything by yourself. God yes. showed me. I sent the apostles two by two. He did yes. that for a reason. Because one yes. person can do it. He sent them yes. out two by two. And then yes. the apostles, some of the apostles couldn't get along. See, people fail yes. to realize they forget to read and study. The apostles have went through everything we go through. There were That's times right. where they didn't get along. They didn't fight. They didn't get on Facebook and leave ugly messages. They just right. went and did what they had to do. We can agree That's to right. disagree. That's where maturity comes in. That's right. Well, if you think about Penina, excuse me, Hannah, you know, as much as she was tormented by Penina, Every day, I'm sure, because, you know, they both were the wives of Elkanah. He was, she was always in her face, throwing up everything in her face. One thing mm-hmm. I love and I respect about Hannah is that she never reacted. Mm-mm. She responded. How did she respond? It kept her on her face. It yes. kept her seeking the Lord. No matter what Penina did, you never see in the text that mm-hmm. Hannah responded in the flesh. She never went back and went off on her and trying to tell her mm-hmm. peace of her mind. She remained in the spirit, in her in her hurt, in her pain, in her frustration. Mm-hmm. She still mm-hmm. walked in the spirit, and God blessed her because she mm-hmm. responded. Because, see, there's a difference between reacting and responding. You react mm-hmm. in your flesh, but when mm-hmm. you're walking in the spirit, you respond according to the way the spirit of God will need you to respond. He may tell you to be quiet. He may tell you to walk away. He may tell you mm-hmm. to pray. But if you're in the flesh, somebody cuts you out, you're ready to cut them out. Somebody calls Absolutely. you and they're ready to call back. Come on, spirit. Yes. Come on, we're in yes. the flesh. But that's why he said you got to walk in the spirit. And so Hannah continued to up. And even when Eli said to her, are you drunk? He thought she was drunk. He accused her of being drunk because she looked like she was drunk, but she was not drunk. She was just in so much agony and so much pain. Mm -hmm. She was so Mm -hmm. broken and bitter because God had Mm -hmm. answered her prayer. But she responded. She didn't react. She didn't get in the flesh and say, what? You calling me drunk? What? Mm -hmm. No, she Mm -hmm. didn't do that. She stopped and she responded reverently. No, Mm -hmm. your servant, I'm not drunk. I'm just sorrowful. She respected authority. Even though his discernment was off, even though he was not discerning right, he was a priest. So that means you can still be anointed, have a status, and still not be discerning correctly. Be off. Because he was be a off. priest and be completely mm-hmm. off. But oh. she did not but she did not respond. She did not react. Mm-hmm. She responded reverently, mm-hmm. humbly, humbly. And after that, he saw, okay, I missed it. Mm-hmm. And then he decreed yes. a blessing over her life after that. Mm, after he that. decreed a blessing after her response. We still have to respect authority. Yes. It doesn't matter if you think somebody is right or wrong. We got to respect mm-hmm. the office. And you can't just respect it publicly. Let me say that right there. Oh, my God, I felt that down with it. The Holy Ghost said, you can't just do it in a public setting and then get behind folks' back and start talking.
talking about. Because he's that silent listener in every conversation. You can't have this false humility and this false honor that you're in their presence and you're being one way, and then you get out of their presence and you're talking about it. You're tearing them down. Mm-hmm. Who she thinks she is, who he thinks mm-hmm. she he is. Oh, my God. God sees all of that. And so mm-hmm. it should be. We need to know that just because we're not saying it in a public setting, God gets right there in the private setting, too. And those mm-hmm. things will hinder your blessings as well. It will. Oh, it my will. God, from Zion. And I'm telling you something. Hannah didn't just have one. She had five kids. God, five kids, her expectations. She said, I'm about to give you, give you more than one. I had your womb closed up. But right now, I'm about to open it up. And when I open it up, you ain't just going to have one. I'm giving you five. Somebody's going to get more than one house. Somebody's about to get a land. Somebody's not going to, mm-hmm. hey, somebody's about to be a land owner. Hallelujah. Somebody believe in God for an apartment. God said, I'm about to give you a house. And the Bible says that God will give you houses that you didn't even build. Hallelujah. He won't give you a position that you're not even qualified for. If you just mm-hmm. go through the process, Hannah did not give up. She could have gave up. She could have committed suicide. She could have been like, I'm done with this. Mm-hmm. God ain't real. I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. He got this woman in my face, rolling all what she got up in my face. But she still continued to seek the Lord, which says to me that she had a relationship with God. Even though she was not able to produce, it didn't stop her from doing what was right. And at the end, God rewarded her, blew her mind. But Nina knew she had a baby. Everybody that knew she was there knew that she had a child. So God got the most glory because she obeyed God and she did not give up. God set her up not only to bless her, but so that he can get the most glory out of her situation. He gets the glory out of your life. My God. Mm-mm-mm. Maturity. She was Maturity. mature. She went through. She was mature. And walked through it gracefully. Not mm-hmm. saying she didn't cry. Didn't say she, it's all right to cry, but don't mm-hmm. stop praying. Mm-hmm. It's okay to cry, but don't stop believing. Mm-hmm. Oh, I feel God. Somebody about to walk into the greatest mm-hmm. season of their life mm-hmm. if they do not mm-hmm. give up. Mm-hmm. Don't quit. Don't quit. I don't know who's on here, Jesus. but God said, I have not forgotten what I said. I, mm-hmm. Listen, what I say, I'm going to bring it to pass. The Bible says that before Jesus, listen, before Jesus, oh my God, before Jesus was crucified, he told the disciples, he said, listen, they're about to put me down. But don't worry about it. In three days, I'm getting up. And then the mm-hmm. Bible says that both Marys went to the tomb. Elder Patrice, they went to the tomb. And the angel mm-hmm. was there. And they said, where is he? The angel said, he has risen just mm-hmm. like he God said if he said it, he's going to bring it to pass. Yes, yes. He prophesied his own resurrection. If he prophesied his own resurrection, don't you know that he can speak, he, when he speaks to you about anything, he's going to do it? The question yes. is, do you believe it? Do you believe it? Do you have a revelation of who he is? Do you believe mm. that God's going to do what he said, or are you doubting it? Mm-hmm. All things are possible to them that believe, mm-hmm. but there's still a process. Walk through the process and watch God blow your mind, just like he did here. See? 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 My God, I feel the Holy Ghost. The, uh, yes, yes, I'm trying to hold back. I'm sitting over here shaking. It's a maturity. <laughs> it's a maturity. maturity. Mm-hmm. It's maturity. And once you realize that you have to be mature, then you'll back off from a lot of stuff. And a lot of people don't like a lot of people don't like to back off because they think it's a sign of weakness, but it's more power. Because once oh. you have that power from being back it off, you can walk through everything. And ha- and then my thing is, when you get the power, you can take other folks with you. That's, that's what good. people fail to realize. This ain't all about just you. This is about right. everybody that's connected to you. You that's have so to true. be the one to back up and be mature enough to say, you know what? Uh uh-uh. uh uh uh. It is what it is. We're going to go on and go through this. We're going to grip hands, link arms, and we're going to pray our way through. We're going to hold our heads down like the rams. When rams about to ram you, they hold their head down and charge (laughs) full straight ahead. (laughs) That's right. They don't even know where they're going, Pastor. They don't know. That's so right. That's so right. They put their heads down because they know they got them two rams at the top of their head, them two little things. They right. will knock you clean out, but they know they got enough power in their head 
to knock That's you it. off your feet. Well, you preach it. Because they, you preach come it. Come on. Because they, they grew up. They were born knowing they had power. They just had to grow into it. That's so powerful. And you know what, Elder Patrice, I really believe this with all of my heart, that we need to surround ourselves with people that's going to hold somebody. us accountable. Mm-hmm. Hold us accountable. You need people around you. That's not not yes. just yes people around you. You need people yes. to be like, hey, sis, you know what, that's not mm-hmm. right. Not standing in the place of God, but saying mm-hmm. it in love. You hear mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Saying it in yes. love, because you know what, we're not walking. That's not We're not walking in the spirit. That's not good. Mm-hmm. So you mm-hmm. need to surround yourself with people who want to live right. You need mm-hmm. to surround yourself with people who don't enjoy compromising every now and then. Now, mm-hmm. I'm not saying you won't mess up because we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I'm not saying that. But I'm saying yeah. you need to connect yourself with people who are striving to be all that God wants them to be for real. Yes. Because iron yes. sharpens iron. You Come on. need people around you that is mm-hmm. serious about their walk and not mm-hmm. just, in, just a, in circles that make you comfortable mm-hmm. about doing mm-hmm. wrong. Mm. Because mm. it's, it's what will keep you on the right track. Mm. Oh, serious I about it. And see, uh, but it. back again, Pastor, that's maturity. Because when you're serious about your walk, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Talk. It doesn't matter. So when you're hanging with people, and we care, so let's go and get that straight. We care, but we don't care that you are to a point that you have a problem. I love right. you. I'm concerned right. about you, but I know right. what God has for me to do. And That's if that so means right. it involves you, come on. If you don't want to be involved, ooh, I'll catch you on the round table. You know what I'm That's saying? Exactly because the exactly maturity, right. maturity is 360, 360, yes. your purpose, your growth, your development, your prosperity. Yes, you know, your everything is the mature. Once you said that, that thing just hanging over my head because I'm like, Thank you Lord. don't want you 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 have to the saying a lot of people say because people lately I've been telling them stop saying that. People, when you're mature, you stop yes. saying God is still working with me. No, He's right. worked with you. Are you mature enough to know He's worked with you to stop doing that foolishness? That's exactly right. And the thing is, a lady, I mean, uh, Elder Patrice, you cannot mature without it getting in the word of God. Mm-hmm. You cannot Jesus. mature without prayer. Because if you, now you just got a form of godliness and mm-hmm. denying the power thereof. And the enemy denying. will deceive you to make you think you walking in power. But you ain't walking mm-hmm. the power if you ain't in the word and you ain't mm-hmm. walking in no power if you listen, if you ain't a woman or a man of God of prayer. And that mm-hmm. Jesus was a man of power not only because mm-hmm. He was he was God in the flesh, mm-hmm. but because he was a man who prayed, he was a mm-hmm. man who prayed. He was with the disciples, but there were many times that he got away alone with that. Turn up, Woo! Turn up, stand up, stand up, stand up, He pulled away, and he got yes. along with God. Hey, he knew his father. They had him. God, he was the one with God. Mm. He didn't need people around him to validate who he was. He knew who Mm-mm. he was. He didn't have time mm. to tell him he was anointed, but he was appointed. Mm-mm. He knew who Mm-mm. he was. And when you got the hand of God, you don't need nobody else to name him. No, no, no. When you got the hand of God, you do not need nobody to name him. That's not confidence. That's not confidence. It's called Mm-mm. God's confidence. I'm Mm-mm. confident in who I am with him. And what you got to think and what you're saying is not going to change his mind about me. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Your opinion it's ain't going to change his mind. Your comment Mm-mm. ain't going to make his mind change his mind. He's still going to do what he said as I continue to follow his instructions. Because I'm mature enough to keep pushing. Shit. Oh, my. I'm telling you, I feel the Holy Ghost right here. Uh, <laughs> I'm oh not, I'm, we... We got to get off this line. <laughs> oh, my Woo! God. Oh, my God. I'm going to need you to go on and pray. Because, see, we could talk about this. Because I'm telling you, that mature thing, when it hits you, you know. You know. And I can admit oh, there's some things I, I need to come up in. But I thank God I'm mature enough to recognize the error. That's good. Now, that's it. That's where pray through starts. Listen, mm-hmm. that is where pray through starts is when you get a revelation of your own error. 
when you can say, oh, you know what, I missed it. And God is big on that, uh, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Elder Patrice, because when mm-hmm. Adam and Eve messed up, she, mm-hmm. God said, the voice of the Lord went throughout the garden. He said, where are thou? Adam, mm-hmm. where are you? It wasn't that God did not know where Adam was. He wanted Adam to acknowledge where he was. You mm-hmm. are mature when you can acknowledge your role. Mm-hmm. He wanted, even though he said, the woman you gave me, but <laughs> what <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to make you is that God said, where are you? Where are you in your life? Where are you mm-hmm. in your prayer life? Where are you with your forgiveness? Where are you mm-hmm. with, your, with your life? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where you at? Where, where are you, you at? at? Where are you at? You know where, where everybody you else is at. You know where yeah. everybody where else you is at? at. Where are you at? <laughs> the Bible says, so let, a, let a man first examine himself. <laughs> You finna start. We finna start a whole nother thing. We're gonna have to have you back because I think we have you back along with Minister Chubb and Pastor Terry in a couple of weeks. So we're gonna have to let them catch that revelation later. Let me give you to uh, get you to pray. But before you pray, Pastor, please let them know what you have going on in California on August 11th. Uh oh, did I lose her, Pastor? Hello. Well, maybe we got, she lost the disconnect. Um, I will go ahead and announce it on August 11th in California. Check the Facebook page. I will post it on my page, or you can check Keisha Edward Chubb's page. Pastor Lewis is having a prayer after 60 days of prayer. She has been praying every morning at 630 Pacific Standard Time, um, praying continually for 60 days as the Lord has instructed. So she is having a conference on 8-11 to end out her 60 days of prayer, okay? I'm hoping that we can get her back on um, the line. Or you can check Women Walking in Strength page as well. Please, please, you just heard the mighty woman of God on the line. We probably got disconnected. I know she was riding because she uh, went out her way to get on the line. We thank God for Pastor Lewis, Pastor Keisha Lewis, for coming on the line. We thank God for all of her entourage, her members, her armor bearers, her spiritual daughter, everybody who made the day. I hope you enjoyed the um, service. Um, Oh, yeah, she just texted saying she lost us, so we're going to have to see if we can get her back. But in the meantime, um, please keep in mind to see her page, please. We enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. We really, really did. We appreciate that she was on the line. We will have her back along with her spiritual daughter and another pastor on August 6th. They will be talking about the actual conference that day. So I will go ahead and end out the call because, unfortunately, we lost Pastor Lewis, but it was right on time. So we thank God. We'll go ahead and end out. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity for Pastor Keisha Lewis to be on the line. God, we ask you to cover her and plead the blood and renew the virtue that she just gave out on this line. God, in the name of Jesus, watch over her family and the ministry, and we speak increase over her right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, bless everybody that is on the line, that is listening via phone, internet, or Facebook page. We thank you right now for this call because we're mature enough to know that we need to make some changes before we go any further in the kingdom of God. So we thank you for being a second chance, God, and allowing us to see our errors and our ways. So, God, right now, in the name of Jesus, we give you honor and praise, and we bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you for everybody being on the line. Continue to share the call. We promise to get her back along with her uh, spiritual daughter as well and other pastors in California. I am connected, uh, keep connecting with them and we hope that you enjoyed the call. As always, our motto here is your life shall be so salty that it makes someone else thirsty for Christ. Everyone have a great night. We thank you all. Pastor Lewis, if you hear us, we love you and we appreciate you and we bless God for you. Everybody have a great night. Bye-bye.